Yeah, the previous conversations were nice. People reacted. <laughs> oh, they did. I didn't. Uh, I didn't know you even published it. Uh huh. Where? How did they react? Um, as usual, like very discordant reactions. Some say yes, things, and others say no, no, no. I mean, when you talk about politics, what can you do? Yes, the, uh, I'm sure that um, many did not agree. I mean, some people believe Trump is a savior, and others believe that um, he, um, you know the other one is the, the savior. Yes, it's. <laughs> Trump is not a savior. <laughs> he's a he's a very sick man. Uh, uh, he's a. Uh, I I ha, uh, do you know the movie which is called Once in America? No. Oh gosh, it's a great movie. It's one of the mafia movies, Once in America. And there was a a, a gangster. Uh, which was uh, a head of the gangster team, which then became a, a politician and kind of cut his ties with the gangster world. Uh, so he basically changed his per persona and became a politician, but he still used uh, the old methods. Oh, I see. And he, ha he had the red hair and... Uh, not not exactly a bullion personality. He was actually the other way around. But he had, he had a red hair and I had a, uh, a a trip in which uh, I just saw the similarity between uh, between the two. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But I it doesn't really mean that the angels are not behind Trump. I I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. And what would their purpose be? Ah, uh, um, you know, they can be confused either, or they have some magic mission or something, divine mission. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm not taking sides. I'm observing. I don't think uh, it's uh, for me to take sides. Uh, my side is on the side of uh, the angels, but. Uh, until it doesn't, uh, so, yeah. it doesn't matter if you take sides or not because what will happen will happen and uh, then people will have to accept it or not accept it and at this point Biden has won the election although that many are saying that it, uh, there's been so much fraud they've had 30 or more than 30 lawsuits that prove that it's not been fraudulent. So they're still calling fraud, but they can't find any. They can't find any fraud because it's not there. <laughs> um, um, no, I... I, 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 bit, I, they have found little pockets of fraud here and there, but nothing on a national level, nothing on a national scale. I, it, I, I'm really doubtful. I, I didn't look into that, so I didn't look, but uh, my uh, take on the system is that it's very very fraudulent and everything is manipulated so i don't really trust it of course i think, I think the, the system is, is when from when the last election happened in 2016 trump was all up in arms that things were going to be fraudulent so he had it fixed so that it would be uh very airtight so that it would be safe so that it would be all the things that he wanted it to be. So there's no machines that are fraudulent. So because of his doing, he's the one that had them all checked out. He's the one that made them do that. So it became very good 
everything became much more uh, uh, upstanding and standardized because he didn't want anybody uh, messing with the uh, machines or anything because he felt he was going to win and it was going to be a landslide and everything. And so the machines were up to par. There was nothing wrong with the machinery. And there was nothing wrong. There is no, there may be bad uh, elections in other countries, but we pride ourselves here in bringing the best election totals together as we can. And even the Republicans that are running these states were overseeing the uh, polls and the machinery and the people and said it was done fairly. So, and even the recounts have shown that it was done fairly. Okay, uh, that's fine, whatever. Uh, I'm saying my point is that even if it is true, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not excited about either, you know, that drama is not my drama. That's my point. I, I'm not the interested is, in that. <clears throat> if people lose faith in their country and in the okay. way things are done, then what is there? I mean, then the country falls. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't have faith in that country, no. People are cool, but uh, the democracy here, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't like revolutions. I don't like when things fall. Yeah, I don't like falling, but I'm not, a, uh, not, uh, not. Yeah, I don't want the country to fall. But um, what I see is uh, is very old and uh, rotten. It reminds me of the Soviet Union before it fell. So I wish it doesn't fall the way the Soviet Union fell. But I think it needs a lot of transformation, and um, I think it needs a lot of awakening. And I think the drama of uh, uh, this election is uh, is distracting people from awakening. I think it's a, a false uh, false excitement. Neither neither candidate is, is deserves that much attention. I think they are both not that interesting. And even the elections are not that. The the election system is still like I mean that it's it's obsolete. The election system is obsolete. And um, also, I don't like the people who are. I mean, if people elected Trump, then I don't like these people. I mean, I like some of the Americans, but the majority of seems like very, very, uh, how do you say, not worth him uh, to be elected. Yeah, I think the, if people elect Trump, then there is something wrong with people. Well, it's an old system, yes. But it's it's the one that's in place. It gets very discouraging to hear uh, so much down, so many people being so negative. So it's just it's just very discouraging to me that uh, people cannot uh, come to. Uh, to the table and talk things out and make make them right or at least discuss them until they are uh at least agreeing on some points but right now it's just a battle um yeah let's uh, if you brainstorm what needs to be done i think the system needs to be much more flexible because the Senate, which doesn't allow change in the laws, is is uh, it doesn't add to stability. It adds to stagnation. Basically, stability requires certain flexibility. And the last changes of the law were laws were done by um, uh, LBJ, and it was sixty seven, roughly the end of sixty. So. Uh, the laws are 50 years old and there is a lot of laws that need to be updated and the Senate is not capable of doing that. It's old people and uh, the whole system is kind of resisting any change. And that is, uh, it's the major flaw of the system. So the whole structure needs to be changed. Also, 
uh, the election election system is also not good. Even even if it was correct, I mean, the idea of two parties selecting some weird candidates, it's it's really weird. I mean, the system is rotten because they cannot come up with good, there are good people in the country, but somehow they don't make it to the top. So the whole system needs to be changed. And I don't know what is uh, what can replace it. I like like uh, Northern Europe type of system, like Sweden and stuff, but, and, uh, but these are different countries in different situations. They don't, they're all small and they are not protecting themselves. They're basically protected by America. So it's a, it's a very weird situation where uh, there is no obvious solution. And you know, if people elect Trump, they, you know, I don't, I wouldn't trust people electing their presidents. I think people are not ready for election. Well, the thing is, uh, no one, I'm not sure what's going to happen still because it is possible that uh, Trump will overthrow the government. He has his people staying silent and supporting whatever he does, which is very destructive to democracy. And they're not saying anything because they want to win those Senate seats in Georgia. And they figure if they say, speak out against the president, then he won't support the people in Georgia. And they want those two senators to, to so that they can keep control of the Senate. Because if they go to, go to Democrats, then the Democrats control the Senate. So it is a big ploy for power and the thing is it's destroying the trust of the people and it's destroying uh the base of what the country stands for and so after this election it's it's uh not going to be really the united states anymore it's not going to be really america anymore as as it used to be it's and the Republican Party is going to be the re Trumpian party. It's not going to be the Republican Party anymore. It's going to be Trump oriented because he's going to make it that way because he's going to keep blabbing continuously even after he's uh, out of the White House. He's going to continuously say that everything was, was fixed and everything was wrong and everything else. He's not going to ever be quiet because he can't stand to lose. And that is a narcissistic trait. And he is a narcissist. And there are many narcissists following him. So um, he is, uh, I just don't know how he even got there, except by lies and by fraud, fraudulent means. But it is that he was got there and now he's not going to leave pleasantly. He's not going to leave in the fashion that any other president has ever left because he's going to scream and yell and stamp his feet like a little baby because he didn't win. And it isn't because the electoral college was wrong. It isn't because there was fraud it's n none of those things because they all been proven incorrect. It's because he can't stand to lose and that he's mentally ill. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm not interested in that. I, I, I guess I should be, I mean, my, um, the fate of the world depends on that, but somehow it's kind of boring. It's a boring it, drama. It is, it's, I, I'm not, I don't want to even talk about it anymore because it is what it is. It's nobody's going to ever agree with each other. They're all going to have their own opinions and it's tearing the nation apart. And that's the way it is. It's going to continue to do that. So it's, it's not going to stop. I would want to say that I would want to see a unified America. I want to see people doing things across partisan lines. I'd like to see people working together and talking together and, uh, and, and at least discussing the, the differences. But, 
you know, you have you have to take a side. So I do. I no, do. No, no, I don't have to take a side. No, I, I, I don't take well, either of those. You're not from here. All uh, right. And I think, um, no, I don't think good people should do take the sides. I think they should abandon both of them. No. I, I'm, I would like to not just unify the United States. I'd like to unify people and bring people together. But uh, I, I've tried to talk to other people. I, I will go along with some, Trump has done some good things. He has. There are good things that he has done. I'm not saying he's been totally bad. There, he is uh, getting this uh, vaccine in front of the people quickly is a good thing. He's done some other things in, in the government that are good, but uh, it's all going to go downhill in his legacy because of the way he's acting now. I think vaccine is a fraud too. Um, <laughs> I think vaccine is, a is a, just a step for global control and cheapen everybody. Uh, I mean, all right, another, that's just another conspiracy theory. Yeah. Another negativity that people can uphold. It's just so, it's so ridiculous that there are so many conspiracy theories out there. There's a hundred of them. And if you believe half of them, then you're living in La La Land. You have to believe, my, you have to be, no, no. you have to live in the real world. You have to see what's going on here in the real world and not pretend that everybody's trying to hurt everybody else and control their minds and everything else. If that's the case, we're doomed anyway. No, no, so no. So if that's no. the case, uh, mind control will happen no matter what we do. And some of these people are saying, oh, the vaccine. It has something in it to control our minds. How do you know they're not controlling your mind to make you think that so that you don't take it and die? Um, no, no, I, do, I use scientific method and I do my research. <laughs> I'm not just looking at the uh, random things. I do my research. I'm not believing conspiracy theories because they look attractive. I'm, I'm believing them because I do my research and I do my homework. And where is the information coming from that you put your stock into? Um, basically, uh, there is a lot of evidence that uh, the COVID pandemic was planned way in advance. Yes. So um, I agree with that. I agree with that. So evidence is evidence, like your website, government website, government documents, our witnesses. So that that kind of thing. I know how the politics of science works. So when I um, uh, listen to Judy Moskowitz, it rings truth. So Judy uh, explains how that COVID story, you know, was developed. So there is a lot of detail there. I read her book, and uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. But what about the vaccine? So I studied DARPA. Uh, it's an American um, advanced research agency for defense. And uh, they do have technologies already for mind control. And uh, MK Ultra was one of the projects which kind of leaked out. It was in 70s. And they used LSD and other tricks to, to control mind of people. So. Um, there are certainly programs for mind control. And uh, the fact that they, uh, they have now already the technology to chip everybody and control mind. So I think it's already in progress. In China, I think it's already in progress. There is a lot of information. Once, once you start studying that uh, topic, it's, the technology is already here and people are already doing it. So there is not much uh, doubt that uh, it's, a, it's a process already happening. Do you take the vaccine or not? Of course not. I mean, some because... of the vaccines, some of the vaccines might be good, but um, 
I don't think COVID is that dangerous, but of course, some of, I mean, I think the COVID is not the first infection that they uh, have. I think they have like many more in stock and they just release them as they need them. They just see it as much as they need and then they stop because they want, still want to control and too much they will, will lose control. So for some of the infections, I think uh, would we would have to take vaccines, otherwise we would die. But COVID is not of that kind. COVID is, is not as deadly as it is portrayed to be. COVID is more like a regular flu, just a little bit, a tiny bit more dangerous. So it's not worth taking the vaccine because the risk of being uh, programmed is bigger than the risk of being healed, than the hope of being healed, cured. Also, the efficiency of vaccines is very doubtful. They say it's very temporary. No, no, I think the chipping would, uh, the I mean, the, the system for vaccination of people is, is just building of the system. Maybe the vaccines are real, but they still build the system when they release air, an infection and then they, chip, uh, they uh, inject everybody. And once they get the system in place, then they started uh, injecting the chips. And the chips don't have to be big. They can be like nanochips. It's more like a suspension of nanoparticles. And uh, also, it, uh, I think uh, the, the idea is to genetically modify humans to be more accept susceptible to, to electromagnetic mind control. I think it's in, in, in progress. I don't think everybody is mind controlled, but I met one person who was mind control and it was very convincing. Uh, but here, I think you had uh, mechanical chips like electronic. He has a memory of being taken to a base and, uh, and now he is controlled. He, he hears uh, voices all the time, nonstop. And the voices seem to be computer generated. So it's, it's doable, the technology is here. It's, uh, I think it's a, a real plan. And I don't mind it because I think it's uh, the humanity needs unification. If, if it is unified through mind control, it's still a unification. I think it's not that bad. Mm, okay. Um, how do you know if a person is mind controlled? Oh, he, he tells lots of stories and, you know, they sound very true. He... Uh, he loses time. Uh, he is forced to do things which he wouldn't do normally. Um, he can't work, and he hears voices all the time. And, and how do you how do you different differentiate that from mental illness? Ah, good question. Um, mm, Uh, there are slight, slight uh, indications that this is real because his family has a military history and um, uh, the voices that he hears don't, don't have a usual agenda of the spirits. They have, they have a typical agenda of, of the military. Um, basically, they do experiments on him to control his mind and uh, yeah, it's it's... It's possible that he's just crazy, but um, yes, here I don't have a proof, but it's, oh gosh. No, there is no proof. Uh, that's more like a feeling. But I, I, I basically, I believe him. Basically, he, the story he told me is very convincing. So um, I didn't meet too many crazy people, but this person seems like, he seemed more normal than, than crazy. and. Um, I, I know a lot of people out there that seem very, very normal, but right. since this election, they seem crazy to me. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's difficult to tell apart. Yeah, it's not a proof. Yeah, I would say it's more like an illustration for me. Uh, I can, of course, I cannot prove. How can I prove? I could the prove it. Is, I think... Yeah. I think some people are under mind control when it comes to their selection for this president. 
it it seems that they would do anything for him. They would fight for him, die for him. They've said it. They will kill for him, die for him, and fight for him. And and that doesn't seem right to me. There are two possible ex explanations. One is that they really believe it's a, a savior, um, divine savior. And they committed to divine, uh, to serve God. And uh, if they made the logical connection that is a divine savior, then they have to follow their promise. And the second explanation is possibly we are dealing with past life, with the past life um, um, karma where we have not only one person like uh, incarnating, but the whole uh, army of people incarnating, and then they follow their leader. They just come all together from the past in uh, some time in the in all distant past, and they just continue what they did in the previous life. I went to school to study God and spirit and what God and spirit are like. Uh, if they believe that this is a savior, then that's a very, very, very big disconnect for me. Uh, I'm not saying he's a Jesus, but... Uh, oh, no, he's not. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying they believe that he is Jesus, but um, if, looking from the other perspective, suppose um, the, uh, the angels... The divine forces wanted to send someone to the government to do a transformation. I'm certain that this person has to be like um, pretty, pretty dirty and pretty negative because otherwise you wouldn't be able to survive in that environment. So, like, like uh, I studied Lyndon Lyndon Johnson. Uh, he was like a really dishonest. Um, a gentleman with dishonest man with uh, which which manipulated people like really thoroughly, and uh, uh, the author says that sometimes like he met people who know how people are manipulated and they recognize the behavior. Uh, he's a, he was an artist in, in manipulation of people, and some of them, some of them like liked it and some didn't like it, but uh, he was really good in manipulating people. And he did it like in, in mass, like lots of people. He manipulated like hundreds of people a day through phone and personal communications and stuff and, and all other possible ways. So, and he was the one who transformed a lot of American law into the positive. So he did a good job in transformation, much bigger than Kennedy did actually. Kennedy did like spiritual, but Lyndon Johnson did the uh, the dirty side, the the laws and, and regulations here. I think he, he was able to pass through the Senate and Congress about thousand laws or something like that. Um, so if you compare uh, um, Trump to Lyndon Johnson, there, there are similarities. He's like a mafia leader. And, and Lyndon Johnson might have had a hand in Killing Kennedy, so he, 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 he certainly wanted it. So he certainly wanted. Not sure if he did it, but he certainly wanted it. So, uh, um, what I'm saying, uh, I, I wouldn't exclude the possibility that Trump is has a divine mission. Hmm. Not not as a like a saint, but other way around as a as a, as a who, Shiva, as, as an incarnation of Shiva, as a destroyer. But uh, somebody needs to change something. And Obama promised change, but it wasn't there. It was just the uh, uh, other way around. He promised, but he didn't deliver. And Trump um, didn't deliver either, either but, uh, but he has, introduced more change more, more to the negative but he destroyed a lot of things for sure yes he did he destroyed a lot 
he didn't follow any protocols or um, any of the things that were set uh, in the law for him to do. He would he disregarded it and did whatever he wanted to do. Which other countries are looking at and seeing that they they are afraid of Donald Trump because nobody knows what he'll do next. And perhaps that's, per, that's a good thing for us, for Donald Trump, is that other countries are afraid of him. <clears throat> so my hope is that there will be awakening. There will be like a a disclosure and awakening. And um, that's the only hope I think I have, uh, that the people finally will get through the, uh, the, 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 the mass media is so um, obviously lying that uh, more and more people would wake, wake up to that and uh, see, look for alternative information and hopefully they will find it. What are they lying about? Um, the best proof that they align is that they pretend to be independent, but at the same day, at the same time, like tens of uh, main stations say the same thing, just in different, sometimes in the same words. That's the best proof. Like there are videos on YouTube where they collected the announcement from different stations. Uh, kind of push on a certain agenda. And basically you can see like about maybe 20, 20 TV hosts saying the same thing, uh, just in different intonations. And so to me- the same, uh, You mean Fox News? I, 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 don't, I don't know the difference, so I, I cannot tell. The thing is, yes, uh, the cabal controls all the news all the right. time. Right, right. So, they have the news pitted against each other. They're having one a group of news stations saying this dialogue and another group saying this dialogue. And uh, they don't agree with one another. And, um, and so it keeps things separated and divided. But what is the, which one is the truth? If, if either one. Um, yeah, I'm reading books. There is one, there's one that uh, controls the world, what the world thinks, and there's one that controls what the people of the United States think. Yeah, I'm reading books and uh, lots of books are actually pretty independent. So that's my main source of information. Because, um, you know, somehow books are not yet censored, not completely censored. There is a lot of uncensored books. So, so there is information out there, just people need to read it. And I hope that there will be some moment where the, the controlling system will go too far and lose credibility and people would start, start looking for alternative information and find it. And in the Soviet Union, there was a period of disclosure of about five years where it was uh, the main news started broadcasting truth. So that was so refreshing. And uh, the information was given to us gradually, not all at once, but um, there was a gradual kind of awakening. That was so great. And- uh, I, But I don't think that people would know the truth if they heard it. I don't know. Somehow they did. In, uh, they did it in a way in Russia that uh, there this was is a, a new day and age. Things are very different now. Uh, I don't think people will know the truth when they hear it. It's possible, but I hope they do. It's possible that they wouldn't. Of course, some wouldn't. But uh, I uh, now, uh, when we start, you know, I start researching the, the information about the vaccines. 
I find communities of researchers who found the same proof that I did independently, and it's very refreshing. So there are thinking people, there are thinking researchers. There are um, places where people did their homework and actually found the answers. So it's not that complete world is, is in a mess. There is a, there are small places like with a few people, but they actually did the homework and they know the, the real thing. And the real thing exists. The thing uh, is, there's uh, so many different <laughs> kinds of vaccines, so many different kinds of pieces of information about the vaccines, and so many people standing up and saying different things that are being either saying that they're true, but other people are discrediting. <laughs> so it's a confusing time. People don't know where people are not going to do all the the uh, research that you're doing, and they're not going to be doing the research that I'm doing. So they're just going to have to pick one. And how is that going to work out for us in a good way? Good point. So <clears throat> I, I know that there are people who have little ability of finding the truth. Yes. They, they just are not researchers. They don't use logic. They use some sort of other ways, like emotional ways, or uh, there are people who are just li like to be with the majority. And so there are people who like to be with the structure. So they are loyal to the structure, to the ideas. But um, uh, the, still, the truth exists. The, um, the plot is not that sophisticated. There is a lot of opinions, and there is a lot of, uh, I would say, our own opinions, but there is still, um, the truth still is out there, basically. The thing is, five different kinds of truth are out there, and people <laughs> can prove their truth in five different ways. And not all that truth points to the same direction. How do you talk to them about that? I, I come to the meetings of people who are into conspiracy theories. And obviously there is like lots of crazy people among us and there is a lot of serious researchers among us. And uh, everyone dug into the different, di different, uh, different sources but once uh, there is an intention to find truth, uh, it's surprising how many things fit 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 together. Like if if uh, we bring different different um, how do you say different stories, but there is a general. It's like like in an army, like uh, the army intelligence. You see, they they are fighting the enemy. They don't know everything, but there is a general how do you say. Uh, command uh, center where which collects the, the intelligence and from different diverse sources they finally synthesize the, the picture and quite often they are able to confirm things. It takes certain skill but it's possible. No, in science we do it all the time. So I, I, I believe there is about 20, 20 million scientists in the world and we are trained to do the research and I think there would be like maybe another a uh, hundred million uh, investigative journalists and uh, people, investigators in the court and uh, business analysts. So there is a lot of people who are capable of actually doing the research. It's not that everybody is incapable. There, is, there are people. So maybe mm, I would say a few percent of the world are like, and actually when I drive, uh, when I ride taxis, taxi drivers are really good in not everybody, but you uh, know, some really good in so, um, analyzing and summarizing information and getting to the truth. I think once people get out of the mind control, they are they are quite capable of getting getting to the right place. It's not it's not just thousands truths. It's one truth and one lie, and uh, once you get out of the lie, you get to the truth. That's my kind of optimistic view on the world. Okay. I see, but okay, let, let me tell you another, say another thing then. Okay, this coronavirus, you say it's not so serious and it's okay. It's just a little bit worse than the flu. What if you know people that have experienced something much worse than the flu and has left them debilitated afterwards? And that news is not getting out there. 
but it's getting out there that we're being uh, uh, led to believe that masks are just, uh, masks are not really helpful, masks are, uh, are useless, but yet the other findings say that the masks are helpful if both sides are wearing them because it does not re it does not let the uh, disease go very far and you if you're socially distanced it's fine there's so many different things out there i've had two people that i know pass from coronavirus and they're in my age group so the people below my age group were saying oh it's not that serious it's it's okay but when you had when you know of people and their conditions and how they passed, it's a little different. It's a little scarier. It's a little bit more eye-opening. And sure, the numbers of deaths are less than, uh, and yes, it's not uh, an epidemic of bubonic plague-like, but it is a, an epidemic where you have to be careful because if you get it, if I were to get it, I would be in big trouble. Um, so you wanted my reflection on that? Yes. I Again, I say it's uh, this virus is weaker than the, the, what they can send out. So I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, they would send out, out something stronger and, uh, and then uh, it would really be worthy isolating. Uh, so I'm not saying that any virus is safe. I'm saying just this this time it's not as dangerous, especially in San Diego, it's not as bad. Like no, I see- It's uh, good in some areas. Yeah, I see that say in um, uh, Costco store, there are uh, people on the ca cashiers who, who see about maybe a few thousand people a day and they're still alive. Uh, which means that it's it's uh, it's not as bad because the masks say it improves your protection maybe a tiny bit like not a hundred percent it improves it maybe a little bit so they they still breathe the same airs and there is a lot of virus that comes to them and they somehow survive that so it's it means that it's survivable for some people yes. Obviously, some might have died, some might got sick, but they were replaced by others who are who developed the immunity to the virus. Um, I also have several friends or friends of friends that died, so it's it's, it's a real thing. I, I know for sure. And uh, for some, it was like for, for for everyone, it was a big tragedy when somebody died. Of course. Um, Personally, if, uh, if I was like in a situation where um, I would be seriously worried about the infection, I would certainly wear the mask. But my estimated in San Diego, it's, uh, it's not as bad right at the moment. So um, I see people, again, the cashiers are the proof that it's not as bad. So, and also the hospitals are largely empty. They, they are in San Diego. The hospitals are still empty, like empty. But not everywhere. What about yeah. in San Francisco, where they said that it's really bad and there's very few hospital beds left? Possible. Yeah. In in, in New York, I think they seeded more virus. So uh, one of the friends of friends uh, or relative of friends died in New York, and I think there was just lots more virus seeded. Like they attacked what about New York. In San Francisco. They have a. The same thing. It's really bad there. They only have a hundred beds left, or something, and there's thousands reporting uh, that they need to go to the hospital, etc. Are they blowing that out of proportion? Uh, let me finish. So in uh, in New York, they see the virus, but also they attacked it with 9/11 um, attacks. So it was, I think, the same the same cabal attacking. So it makes uh, a nice connection. Somehow they don't like New York, I don't know why. Maybe because of the Jews, but maybe because of the, some other reasons. Um, of course, in the places where it is in serious, a serious problem, it, it doesn't really matter what, what is the source. Suppose it's a, 
it's a seeded virus or natural virus. Of course, you need some some way of protecting people. And I uh, think isolation when wearing a mask would be there reasonable. Yeah, I would consider that. Yeah, I would consider that. But in many other places, I would think it is, it is, um, it's more like, in San Diego for sure, it is more like a loyalty sign rather than practical thing. Like I see people uh, right here in, in this area, like very open area, where is uh, nice fresh air, they still wear masks, they run in a mask. And I think it's, it is, um, it's more like either loyalty or they just don't care. But for me, like fresh air is very healthy and healing. So I think they are harming themselves <clears throat> more than they are helping themselves by running outdoors in, in the mask. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I have thought, I have mixed thoughts about the mask, uh, to be honest. Uh, I don't know how protective it really is, if it is protective at all sometimes. But they say that it is. They say that it isn't. It's it's a little confusing, and the statistics that come out are very confusing as well. So, it's it is uh, a confusing thing to me about the mask. So I uh, I wear I wear, I wear it in the stores. I wear it when I go out because it is uh, it's mandatory for one thing to wear it in the stores. The other thing is that I feel protected with it on. I have an allergy to tree pollen and it's pretty strong. I start sneezing like in half a minute. So it's very, very easy to detect. And tree pollen is uh, pretty small. It's much bigger than a virus, but it's pretty small. So uh, I would say the different masks, like the ones, the funny ones, the homemade or like the fabric masks would uh, reduce that tree pollen maybe 30%. It's not 90%, it's 30%. There are nine, nine nicer masks called um, N95 by, three, by uh, MMM, by 3M, by yes. 3M. Uh, they're one. a little better, they're a little better. You, I would still feel the um, sneezing, but it might delay it maybe five minutes. Well, they and, say the, the N95 has to be personally fitted for your face in order for it to be effective. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's where the pollen comes in through the holes on the on the side. Correct. Uh, the the filter is there, but I mean there are holes on the side, slits. And uh, I used I I bought myself a, a powered uh, respiration machine, which has a filter separately on the belt and a battery rechargeable, and a pipe and a, and the face shield and it blow from top to bottom. So all the air goes this way. So you don't breathe your own air. You breathe fresh air and then it right. comes out freely, but it is made for um, woodworkers and paint workers, especially they use it for painting cars in the automotive industry and other That would be effective, well. yeah. Yeah, and um, so, um, this is it protects you, but it doesn't protect other people because whatever you breathe out is not filtered. So ideally, the mask, the ideal mask for the uh, virus protection should filter the air in. They should go out, and there should be a pipe out, and it should be filtered again. That would be perfect. Um, so I would say again that uh, if I had like. If it was more serious, I would wear it when I meet people. But right now, I wear it only for politeness. And if I see that the other person uh, doesn't wear it, I, I don't, don't wear it either. And when people hug and uh, and uh, shake hands, I do shake hands. So I don't mind. Well, I do too. I shake hands. Um, I still do that. And there's a lot of places that have uh, the the uh, Purell or whatever that sanitizes your hands. But I don't, we use that pretty often, but I stay, I've been staying at home more often. I'm not going out to restaurants. I'm not doing anything to, I'm not being irresponsible. Let's put it that way. 
yeah, I still go to Reiki healers and um, some of them are social. They kind of meet people every week. So I canceled all my Reikis. Uh huh. I don't know how it's up there in uh, Rochester, but I, I think it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's unclear. I didn't, I didn't cancel my, my Reikis. Yes, I uh, it canceled was, all of mine because New York State is one of the big places. Uh, uh, Rochester is not the biggest place for the virus, but it is ramping up all the time. It's it's a uh, it's uh, over more than a half a million people, so it's a, a big area and a, a very uh, closely knit area in some ways. So it's. It's a place where you have to be careful to some extent. You're frozen. You're frozen. I, I was lost. Um, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, so, you were frozen. So what, whatever needed to freeze, we would freeze, but everything else we allowed to stay, allowed it to stay for. Uh, for at least uh, uh, you know a few hours, so the virus would would die, and then we would put it in the fridge, something like that. Yeah. And if it was if it wasn't uh, sensitive to storage, you would store it longer. Basically, it, uh, this virus is very it, it decays by itself, and when it meets biological substances, it's killed by uh, RNAs very fast. The only way for it to survive is to get to your wet surfaces, your, your own wet surfaces, like eyes and um, inside of the mouth and uh, open open wounds. And then it has a chance of getting inside your cells and then it is safe. Otherwise it dies really fast. Like it, it would be, it, I mean, staying dirty is actually safer for this virus. So washing hands actually destroys the um, proteases and RNAs that kill the virus. So uh, the the people who never wash, they're more protected because there is a lot of <laughs> a lot of enzymes that would RNAs is a super stable enzyme RNAs um, yeah. RNAs A. It's like it sur survives boiling. So if you cover yourself with RNAs, which I don't think they do, uh, that would be a great idea. Then you would protect yourself from the virus a lot. Actually, should patent it. RNAs uh, field masks. Hmm, that's an idea. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, RNA is super stable and, and it's very cheap. It's like you just take uh, anything, boil it, and the extract is basically RNAs. And so food extract, or any bullion would contain a lot of RNAs. And uh, it would kill the virus. So bullion kills the virus, for sure. Okay. So bullion <laughs> would kill the virus. Yeah, yeah spray, spray everything with bullion, beef bullion or any other bullion. Okay. Broth, broth. That makes, I, for some reason, that makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, that makes sense to me. I, I could spray my house with bouillon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, so, but after, after six weeks, I made a conscious, I did my research for six weeks. I didn't like just sit, I did my research. After six weeks, it, came, it became clear to me that the chances are... Um, they're small. They're small, and I, I will gain much more by getting out spiritually. And uh, I just got out. Yeah. And, and uh, I, there was a bit... Go ahead. Uh, uh, spiritually, my life has been better staying in. Uh, but uh, because I do a lot more praying and a lot more... Uh, thinking and a lot more uh, I just uh, do a lot more meditation when I'm staying home alone rather than running about because when I'm running around I'm not doing any meditation so I, right. I found that I, I've become much stronger spiritually or I believe I have that's for God to decide so I believe that it is helping me to stay in and become a little bit closer to uh, God's thoughts and, and God's ideas 
So I'm, I, I, I feel like staying in has actually helped. And it's also helped save money. <laughs> All right. Right. So yeah, uh, yeah. Cooking, yeah, everybody has to learn cooking for sure. That yes. will be very helpful. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I traveled to Dr. Miller and it actually produced a nice results. Um, we made uh, nice moves uh, in science and uh, spirituality. So I traveled to Oregon, it was like a, about 10 days trip. And in the trip, I uh, lived in a minivan I rented a minivan from Hertz. It was a very good deal. Super new minivan and uh, air conditioner there. And um, I had a portable toilet, so I actually didn't have to go to public spaces of too often. Um, it was an interesting thing, but I saw a lot of people. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw a lot of people like truck drivers who didn't protect themselves. So there was a whole culture of people who just ignored the whole thing. They, they had to work. And uh, I just realized they're still alive. There is a lot of people who are like living normal life while everybody else is scared at home. It was a huge separation. Yeah. And like two uh, parallel worlds. You are, it depends on where you are. There are some places that, yes, there there's not no fear at all about it. It's they're out, they work outside, some of them. They work in a places where there's not many people coming in from outside. And that's where it comes in, is if there's a lot of people visiting from another area or bringing it in from other places, there are some places that just don't have that. And so what do they have to be afraid of, really? Because they're not getting that import of any disease or anything of that nature. So... But truck but drivers, larger cities, would... people are in and out all the time, so they can spread it around. But truck drivers, you know, they go to gas stations. They have a chance and they have to pay for the, the, the communicate with cashiers. And still, I mean, there is a lot of communication, I would say. Not yeah, a but lot, the, but... uh, the truck drivers have their own set of pumps. They have their own set of areas where they get their gas. But yes, they still have to go through the cash register uh, yeah. uh, that's inside if they want something inside. But uh, they have to wear a mask when they go into the gas station. Well, they don't. None of them. Like gas stations for truck drivers have zero masks. Okay, no, uh, no. Around they, here they do. The, the, they the, cashers, the cashers do have masks, but the truck drivers, I would say 80%, 90% don't wear the masks. Okay. Uh, that was just my observation in uh, June. Maybe things changed since then. But in June, there was I, I didn't see any truck drivers in masks. No, only cashiers. The cashiers, because they have their job, but truck drivers, I don't think they have system of truck. Um, in Moscow, my um, friend uh, got, a fi got fined for not wearing a mask because they have a camera in his... Uh, uh, common area when you pass the, the the entrance, at the entrance of the apartment building. Okay. So they trace people, they recognize faces and send them fines automatically. Maybe wow. semi-automatically. I'm glad they don't do that here. I think fining people for not wearing masks is a little bit much. I don't, it's, I don't agree with that policy at all. It's not about fines, it's about uh, computer control. Yeah. Uh, the technology is already there in China and Russia. They already use it. Because I don't, I don't think you should be fined for not wearing a mask. I just don't think that's right. But, <laughs> um, but I do think you should be uh, polite. There are some people that are deathly afraid of getting it. If you're not wearing a mask, you're yeah, frightened. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there are people who, yeah, I wear this kind of colored mask. And yep. uh, uh, someone, someone was really upset by my colors. The, I, I wore the mask, but they were really upset by my colors. I, I don't know. I Why? think they, I think they don't like hippies, or they don't. Oh, yeah, it was a a, a butcher, and I wore a mask and uh, basically symbolized the use of drugs. And if a butcher smokes marijuana, he won't have his fingers. 
Yes, that's true. <laughs> Probably not. Right. So I realize that you know his uh, his uh, disgust for marijuana is professional. Yes, it's well, it's uh, jealousy as well. It's uh, I can't do that, but you can. So, um, so spiritually, I had a much richer time since uh, since the COVID. A much yes. richer time. Me too. Uh, I, I, I created, co-created the community of, uh, it's similar to Hukola. Uh, it's for folk Russian songs. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So basically I had my uh, support team from the very beginning of COVID. Like first week of COVID, we had lots of fun. And since then we don't stop. It's, and it's now it's uh, a lot of goofing around, but it's uh, high quality. Uh, social life and uh, music, pretty good music. Good, I love that. And That's uh, a really good pastime. For Russian, for Russian, for Russians, it was hard for me to find the uh, light workers because somehow in Russia, light workers are a bit different. A bit different. There is a, a different vibe. But finally, in my uh, community of. Uh, folk songs we, we found each other there is about i would say five percent three percent of folk singers who are like light workers and finally we got got together and we are doing uh, we, at least we know you know we're already doing something together we already like have a, created a russian hukula basically oh good we, we don't channel yet but uh, there is already a connection the connection is already there and with hukula we have um can you speak quieter? I think you can hear me quieter. I don't have to scream, right? Yes, right. I can hear you. All right. So in Hukula, we have um, uh, spirits guiding us. Uh, I know of um, Kuthumi, and I'm sure there are others who are taking charge and, and, and uh, uh, guide, guiding the whole community. Kuthumi and, is a good one, yes. And um, in... Uh, in folk song, in Russian folk song community, I, I, I clearly see the guidance. I just don't know who they are, but I clearly see that they are also there. Good. And uh, I get uh, messages from them, like little synchronicities from them every every now and then, very often. Like if I do something right, they, they, they send me like a um, high five or something. They send me like encouragement, send me encouragement. Of course, yeah, that's good. Because, well, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? That so is what they, a... they do. They encourage, they support and uplift. And they're there, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. So in our um, folks on community, we are international and we um, just ban all politic discussion, politics discussion. Because yeah. uh, we are certainly cross borders and uh, there are people from every country and every layer and not only from every country but every side on of the fence every side of the division and somehow we come together that's good see that's I, I'm glad we let it away from a political discussion because I I'm tired of that argument uh, because it's just, it's a fruit, fruitless argument because you have one side or the other, that's it. So um, nobody's changing their mind. Now, my point is that uh, we don't have to take sides. Uh, but, okay, you don't have to take sides. You don't. I feel I have to, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like the democracy is at stake. I feel like that... Um, the, the downfall of the country is at, is at stake. But, so I stick with my thought process, but I don't wanna encourage any arguments or any fights or any battles about it. But I do feel strongly that democracy is 
at risk. Yeah, if United States falls, then China rises. And, yes, that's, uh, that's, to me, that's not a good thing. And there will be right now there is like three percent of democracy. If China rises, it would be 03 percent of democracy. Well, I still wouldn't want to be under Chinese control. They're very harsh. Right. Yeah, I sort of would like the Western world to sort of survive. Yes. I, I don't would. know. If California separates from the United States, I don't know if it's good or not because there is so much junk in California either. Um, I I don't think it will separate from the United States. Um, that's just my thought right now, but who knows what the future holds. In Russia, there was a period of uh, excitement about local local government and uh, independence. So the, when it, the empire fell apart, there was a lot of hope that things will go get better uh, in different parts of the empire. And uh, they did get better, but only in in the Western countries, uh, small, tiny Western countries, which are Baltic, Lithuania, uh, Latvia, and Estonia. But everybody else sort of went down because um, the currency fell, and without currency, you can't really have a good economy. Correct. So America is America's main strength is uh, is uh, military support of the strength of dollar of the currency. And if that falls, then uh, everything else will, 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 will fall too. Yes. And I, I yes, sort of that's don't, true. I'm not looking forward to that. No, but I, not either. But nope, I, nope, think, nope. I think for you, unity, there should be some new leaders. Uh, I don't think uh, even Biden can unite the country. I think there should be some uh, well, you, it's yeah, going to be uh, no. It's going to be very, very hard to unite the country. It's too separated. Um, but he's going to try. Uh, the thing is, on the way out, uh, Trump is going to make it. He's going to make it as difficult as possible for unity to be to happen again. I'm sort of uh, looking at the European countries, like Netherlands, um, uh, Netherlands and Czechia and even Poland. There is a certain ability to unite around uh, around good ideas. Yes, I, I and I think that because they're in a smaller area, those ideas can get put across to the people a lot faster and easier. We're in a very large area of those. There's pockets of areas that don't get very much good communication um, and do not understand it necessarily. So it is a different world here because we're so uh, diverse. But now with Zoom, uh, which we are using right now, uh, the humanity yeah. un unites in a new way much faster. Yes, but a lot of people aren't using it. People that are in small towns and uh, I don't think a lot of people are really, uh, they're using maybe Skype occasionally and Zoom occasionally, but I don't think a lot of people are, are using it as much as we think. Lots Not of people have chat. Yeah, lots of people have smartphones, and uh, now they, may they be have, using those. Yeah, they 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 have the opportunity. That, I mean, it's it's free, so there is nothing preventing them from connecting to each other. Right. So but I think I, it's um, just harder to bring a country like ours together. 
So I'm looking forward to uh, two things. First, awakening uh, and disclosure. And second is to unifying of people through smartphones. Yep. I, I hope disclosure happens soon. That will be an awakening for a lot of people. Because the cabal can only function because of their secrecy. Once the secrecy comes out, the control stops, basically. Well, yes, it will, will diminish a, a lot, yes. I agree with that. Right now, we see some, some disclosures about uh, uh, crimes against humanity in uh, film production and uh, in some other areas. But um, once it gets to the control of the media, like uh, the, the disclosure how the media is controlled, I think that would be the key, the key element for awakening. If you know that your news stations are controlled, if you just disclose the whole process, maybe that will, will awaken people. And mm. also how, how the mind is controlled. I think uh, while the mind can, uh, Snowden did a lot of good job on uh, on uh, mind uh, disclosing the this uh, worldwide spying system. Basically, everybody's words are are recorded. Uh, everybody, everything we ev uh, so once the phone is on, uh, everything we say is recorded and it's stored. So uh, all your life is there in the in the computer system. Right. So, so Snowden already exposed that. But uh, he didn't. Uh, so the, the next step is to expose the uh, how is the manipulation of people happening, because the system can also manipulate the bank accounts and uh, jobs, uh, and that's about everything: bank accounts and jobs, and also personal connections. Now Facebook decides who is connected to who. Basically. Um, Facebook has the control to, to, for, to show you my posts or not to show you my posts, right? So the computer system is already in control of that. So the centralized intelligence decides who is connected to who, which is, I think, the, the, key, the key in uh, controlling the world, too. Well, I guess there's more and more controls on the world all the time. Absolutely. So, uh, but I think I, I think there is also like even even the cabal. What cabal is doing, it's still unifying the the planet. I think unification is is a positive. A positive. Uh, that's why the divine forces allow the cabal to go with that plan because otherwise they would block it. Because COVID brought up uh, a lot of unification forward. So basically, yeah, it's. With the global control, there is also global unification, and that unites the people. There is fewer wars, wars, fewer wars, and uh, it's... people uh, are forced to go from a local entertainment to uh, to Zoom and kind of communicate globally. I think that's a great unification factor. Okay. Well, they're dividing our country to conquer it so that they can unify the world. Yeah. 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 That's uh, exactly uh, what they're doing. They're trying to destroy this country so they can unify the world. Right. Because this country is not on the same page as everybody else. Um. Yes and no. Uh, there is a lot of Americanization of the world. Uh, yes, I just there did... is in some places like Japan and South Korea and uh, I... England, maybe or, or or some. But it's there's still a lot of they they still look at us as different. Uh, I discovered that Russia is Americanizing really really fast. Oh really? I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, but. Uh... Now with my Russian folks community, we have a um, lot of connection with, with Russia, like real connection with Russia, like people from Russia and uh, they hear us, we hear them, we talk, we 
all right? And I just discovered that the language changed recently. They introduced a lot of English language in Russian. They kind of just transcribe it in uh, Russian letters, but it's English. The whole country is learning English and yeah. all the American re uh, realities are getting there, all like uh, financial realities yes. and well, commercial realities, the whole culture of uh, commercialism. It's all well, when, getting there. Yeah. When I talk to people uh, in other countries all the time, they tell me that America is one of their uh, one of the places where they want to go to. They want to be in America. They want to. They love America. That's one of their favorite places. So, a lot of people want to come here, and they uh, and still are looking to uh, because they want to experience it because they still look at us as different. Um, yeah, America is uh, is. Uh leading the world for sure not only not only militarily but uh but through movies and uh music uh i mentioned before i uh, found the map of the world the globe where you can click on radio stations of different countries and hear them and surprisingly i would say 90 percent of the world's world plays american music oh yes that's true that and is america absolutely true and American advertisements in English too, which is like, you know, the countries that don't speak English still have American advertisements. Yes, that's true. Yep, I'm aware of that. So um, um, I got I got an app on my phone of a hundred the hundred best songs from every uh, country. I mean, there is a lot of what? Go ahead. I said I got an app on my phone the top 100 songs from every country and there's american songs in every country right every every single country that you you click on uh, they have american songs at least in three or four uh, or maybe even all of the top 10 and much, much of that is uh, afro-american music like rap and stuff yep the rap newest and, stuff out yeah. there Yep, the newest stuff out there. All right. Yep, so, they're up to date. They're up to date. <laughs> so there is a big, uh, a big synchronization and unification under American culture. And uh, yes, um, uh, dollars are used everywhere as uh, one of the most stable currencies. Yes. Uh, their inventions like smartphones. Yep, everything. And the whole culture of uh, startups and business uh, business development and software development is also coming from mostly from California, actually. Yeah. So that so, is a big. That's true. I, I I agree with you. That is very true. So, so yep. the world is already pretty much united. Uh, but still, uh, still, there is a way to go. Uh, yes, there's still a way to go. But you're right. Uh, a lot of Americanized, uh, um, a lot of things from America are around the world at this time. And it is getting more and more, uh, the world's getting closer together, that's for sure. It's, it's not like it used to be. The only place that you won't hear a lot of uh, top 40 songs from America is in Africa. Africa is still in some places very back, back, uh, backwards. I have, uh, I'm riding uh, Uber and Lyft and uh, very often these are will be like African immigrants and yes. uh, from some so Somali, Ethiopia, other places. I, I know people from South Africa. Um, South Africa and is pretty Americanized. Somewhat, somewhat, yeah. yeah somewhat. And, uh, but, uh, you know, they, in their villages, they might not have anything, but they would still have smartphones. Yep, exactly. So they are not as disconnected. Nope. It's a um, little better than you thought. <laughs> um, 
in Russia, I, I noticed that there are young people, talented young people who embrace the culture, American culture. They speak English better than I do. They're yes. like 20 years old, but their English is perfect. And uh, they also embrace the business culture. So they behave like Americans, yeah. which is very hard for Russian to do because it's a different, it's very, very incompatible, very different culture. Yes. In, in America. Of, it's, it's funny. I talk to people all over the world and they all speak English. In America, um, you wouldn't realize, but there is a, a lot of coherence in behavior. If a person speaks, they usually are very coherent in terms of the energies and the tones that they produce. Their voice is pretty musical. In Russia, somehow, there is a radically less coherence. You can, uh, when you hear Russian accent, and when you hear Russian speaks, it's not only the, it's a different music, it's a very discordant music. We are allowed to pronounce false notes, and that's why uh, when uh, Russians try to imitate Americans, they just go out of tune, they cannot. For Russian actors imitating Americans are laughable because they, they cannot get it tuned right. Musicians do, but uh, non-musical actors, they cannot get it right. So it was uh, very interesting to see that the, the young people, they kind of get it all together coherently and harmon in, in harmony, which is different, it, it's new. I, I, I just started like looking for Russian investors and I uh, come across some of the investors that kind of got it, got it coherent. And uh, it comes with the whole, how do you say, the whole joint, uh, not disjointed, not disjointed uh, moral uh, set up and self-respect. It comes with self-respect. In Russia, there is uh, always like a disrespect to self and disrespect to others, which is somehow hidden in the, in the culture. Wow. So okay. it changes, it changes on, also on an energetic level. So uh, hopefully it will continue. I'm not, I'm not, saying that everything is good, but uh, I'm just observing and it's something which is, like if you hear some like in a, in a story, hear the announcement here, you can hear uh, it's, I can recognize it's, it's very musically correct. Lots of people can pronounce it musically in a nice way, which is coherent and it sounds official, pleasant, respectful, self-respectful. And you mm -hmm. hear the announcement in Russia and you can hear they can, they just they cannot make it, especially in 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 a you know airport. Yeah, you travel through a lot of airports, and you can hear announcements in different airports. Like in the Western world, like French is beautiful, English is beautiful, native English. I mean English from Americans and in 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 uh, United Kingdom. But when Russians speak speak, it, you can hear that these people just can't say it right. Um. I don't know why. Maybe because of the we don't have training in Russia. They don't train us for public speaking. Maybe that's one of the reasons. They oh. basically train us. They train us not to speak in public. They train us to respect authority and no, never say anything. That's still in the culture. So when when you ask some uh, uh, cashier to make an announcement in the store, it's uh, it's it just it just doesn't sound right. Just oh, wow, sound. that's interesting. But but they learn it. They learn it now with American culture. It's sort of they see it in the movies that you know people can actually speak up. But that speaking up is very foreign for Russia and China. And I guess that's Russia and China. In India, I think they. I'm not sure about India. I think in India they have their own melody. They can say it just right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't oh, well, it's, it's time for me to go. Right. Thank you for the conversation. So do you mind if I uh, publish it? Um, I don't know, it's sort of boring, but yeah, okay, you can publish it. <laughs> All right. I know, right. I, it's okay, that's fine. It wasn't boring, really. I think, uh, I think we covered uh, both sides of the argument pretty well. Yes, I do too. <laughs> All right, right, so see you in a couple of weeks. All righty, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.